There's two complete different sides of Muscat City that you haven't seen yet. Today I'm going to show you one of the most expensive neighborhoods compared to one of the cheapest neighborhoods, giving you a real insight of what Muscat City is actually like with all its beauty and with all its flaws. Starting off in one of the cheapest neighborhoods in Muscat City, we are in Marbella. Now Marbella is very, very nice. It's more residential, more quiet. But the thing with Marbella is that this exists. There's just rubbish everywhere. There's rubble everywhere. There's separation between houses and new builds. And if you can see over there, you've just got a bunch of construction work that's just been left there. And next to it, there's a house that was once upon a time being done. I don't know if that's ever going to get done. And then right next to that, you've got a complete new build that's been there for about probably under a year. So the general feel over here is that there's a lot of rubble, there's a lot of trash, there's sand, stones and all that sort of stuff. So the scenery isn't that nice. Look, prime example, absolutely beautiful house, greenery. This is the perfect shot. Now stay right there and watch this. Three seconds later, we're in a complete different shot. There's nothing built here in the car behind me. And then two seconds up the road, we've got this. This car can't buy me. This is Marbella. There's a lot of new builds, it's coming up. Okay, I get it. But so much rubbish that people do prop from projects like this and they'll just dump it. They'll just dump it in their next doors or the opposite street. But this is the general feel of Marbella. It's up and coming. You've got nice houses. But in the middle of nice houses, you've got nothing. People are doing work. There's rubble everywhere. There's, there's sand everywhere. But on the flip side, it is very cheap. It's probably the cheapest neighborhood in Muscat City. So if you want a budget entry and you want to move here, this is a very good neighborhood. The people are very nice. There's not too many expats here. Well, there's no expats here at all, actually. But look, building houses over there. Building houses, rubbish, construction work. And when they're finished building these houses, they don't really move these move move the rubble. Again, here, rubble, construction work, pieces just lying around, middle of nothing. Then you've got houses and villas around it. Over here, same thing. So it's the general feel, Marbella. Obviously, it's not all like this everywhere. You might have some some areas that are more developed and there's less of this sort of stuff. But for the majority of residential areas over here, this is the general feel. The Mall of Muscat, absolutely humongous. Way bigger than these European shopping centers. They claim to be the biggest in the world. This is like a little throwaway shopping center to us measly peasants. Yeah, take this big shopping center for you. As you can see though, it's the same theme. Rubble, dirt, sand, trash around. So this is like the general theme of Marbella. I'm just trying to emphasize that point. When we go later to the more expensive sides, you'll see the contrast and the difference that the environment makes. So we're on the way to Kurum right now, the more expensive side of Muscat City. And if you're thinking about moving to Muscat City and there's so many areas, where do you move? How do I know what's expensive, what's cheap, what's good for me, what's not? I'm going to break it down into two parts for you. Let's use Muscat Airport as the hub, right? Everything on the right side of Muscat Airport, let's say it's premium and more expensive and more expat. There's more expats there. So you're going to look at places like El Khwer, Gobra, Thurum, El Moj, these are the more premium, more expensive sides of Muscat City. And on the left side of it, you've got Sib, you've got El Khud, you've got El Mabela. These are going to be cheaper and they're going to be more residential. You're not really going to find expats around these areas. It's going to be less commercial. So if you're looking for a general rule of thumb to follow, follow that. Look at the airport, right side expensive, left side is cheaper. And as you can see here as well, the scenery is night and day different to Marbella, the cheaper side. There's much more greenery, the roads are much more clean, it's more cohesive. So we are here in Kurum, absolutely beautiful area. Very expensive, but as you can see, look at the type of houses they have to offer over here. You know, there as well you have a brand new, beautiful house. You can see the nature here is different, the landscape is different, the roads are smooth, there's not really no dirt. All nice roads and stuff like that but these houses over here are going to be very very expensive very expensive i would say probably about four thousand to five thousand reals per month which is about eight nine grand ten grand per month so i mean if you can afford it 
you can get yourself one of these humongous, I'm not even going to call it a villa, it's a palace. That's what it actually is. But this is the main thing that you're paying for if you're trying to go for the more premium side. You're going to pay for the neighborhood to be much more quiet. You're going to pay for it to be much more fresh, a lot of palm trees, a lot of greenery. And that's really it. You, type, you get probably get these type of buildings in Marbella as well. But maybe they won't be as big, but they'll be just as nice, just as beautiful, but then you'll sacrifice the roads and the greenery and stuff like that. Waterfront, this is where we are. Absolutely stunning, stunning place. As you can see over here, it's quiet. I wonder why it's quiet. Maybe it's because the fact that it's 45 degrees right now and no one wants to be out apart from me filming videos for you guys <laughs> but no it's all good so here we have some cafes some restaurants and stuff and over here is the beautiful sea which is the great thing about Muscat is that you have a variety of mostly everything you've got beaches you've got rivers you've got greenery in certain neighborhoods so you do have it and People, like I said, normally go to shopping centers or they come here. Maybe it's because it's a weekday that it's not that busy. But even during the weekends, it's not that busy during the day. But it's definitely a nice, very nice place to call off in. This is about five minutes from the location that was previously at. You've got beach, beach houses over here. I wonder how much they cost. And over there, we have some beautiful scenery with the mountains, palm trees. There's a mosque there. It's an absolutely stunning, stunning place. I think the only drawback of being in the Gulf, or Oman, the Gulf, Gulf in general, is very, very, very hot. And I keep saying that because I don't think you guys realize how hot it actually is. As you can see, it's very hot. There's no one here. There's no people. There's a reason for that. Everyone's indoors in the air conditioning. Right now, I feel like just jumping in like this with my white fob and getting in I wonder if the water's, water's hot as well but yeah this is called a premium premium area we've got El Moj which is quite close as well it's on like the beach as well it's got restaurants quite similar to this I'll show you next time what that's like but for now this is Kodum waterfront so if you're ever here in on holiday if you're coming to visit definitely come and come and check this place out so we have made it to one of my favorite places here in Muscat City. We're still here in Kurum. We're about 10 minutes away from the last destination. And as you can see, we have a beautiful, beautiful residential place here. It's a gated community. After seven o'clock after Maghrib, it's closed. So no one can enter. But during the day, everyone comes here. There's a beach behind us that we're gonna show you in a bit. And everyone comes here, chills out, relaxes. But it's absolutely, absolutely stunning. This is the pinnacle in my opinion. And we looked at other places like Marbella. We looked at other places in Kurum. But as you can see here, it's just completely, completely different. It looks like a completely different country. You've got people from all over the world here. I've bumped into English people, French people, people that work abroad. They're typically staying here. And we spoke a little bit about residential areas compared to Kurum and there's more expats here. So that's really what it comes down to. If you're in a European country and you wanna to move to Oman, you've got two options realistically. You can be in a cheaper neighborhood, less commercial, not a lot of expats. You won't be able to make friends that easily, opposed to if you come here, you'll be paying more of a premium. Maybe not in Kurum because this is like up here, but if you come along these sides, you have more expats, you bump into a lot of foreigners, you'll be able to make friends. The facilities here are much more commercial, to say the least. Amman is actually a very, very stunning place. But at the same time, I'll be very, very authentic with you and say to you, if you're in the cheaper sides, in the more budget-friendly sides, there's not a lot to do. People typically stay at home, they might go to the shopping center, have a little window shop, grab a little coffee here and there but over here because there's so many expats they've got a golf course up the road they've got tennis courts football pitches there's much more activities to do around these sides opposed to them local sides now don't get me wrong it's not far 
So from Marbella to here, it's about 35 minutes. So I'm not saying this is the pinnacle and it's out of range and you've got to be here. It's just inconvenient if you want to be here all the time. You've got to travel 35 minutes here, do your activity, then go 35 minutes back. I mean, in the grand scheme of things, it's not a lot of time realistically, but it can get very annoying very quickly. There's a lot of traffic sometimes and going out your way all the time to do an activity, it just, there's more friction. So look at this. It's lovely, absolutely lovely. So let's talk about price points. We're here in Kurum. We're obviously in the more premium sides. By the way, you can't buy here as, a, as an expat. This is not one of the ITC zones. But at the same time, the ITC zones literally look like this. They're about 20 minutes further out from here, which is a bit further out from the actual hub, but they look probably a hundred times better than this. And you can actually buy in those locations and you can get your residency and your visa that way through property. It's quite busy as well. I know someone that's actually buying there right now and he wants to turn it into an Airbnb, which is actually a very, very solid idea in my opinion. But in terms of price points, if you're talking about renting over here, in Kurum, you could say, say if you're not here and you're in a bit more of a residential area and it's not a gated community, you don't really need gated community to be fair. So everything's safe. Everything is safe. I could leave my phone right here, go for a dip, go in my car, go chill out, come back, my phone will still be here. So it's not about safety when I talk about gated community. It's just about less restriction to the, to the public, realistically. So Kurum, you could probably pick up a villa, not here like I said, for about £2,000, £1,000, realistically. If you want a really, really nice place, absolutely beautiful, new build, you could probably pick it up for about two grand, three grand per month. Like I'm talking about a six bedroom, four bathroom, probably got a pool there as well. So it's very, very cheap compared to Europe. Now, if you're talking about Marbella, you'll probably get the same property, same amount of rooms, same, same amount of bathrooms, and you'll probably pick it up for half of the price, half of the price, and it'll be exactly the same. The difference is the location. You're not gonna be around the greenery and the nature, and you're gonna be around a lot more residents. Watch out. You're gonna be around a lot more residents opposed to here. So this is actually a good tour for you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I've showed you behind the scenes and the not so glamorous Muscat, and I've showed you an absolute glamorous side of Muscat as well. Hit like, hit subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.